hate to break it to you, but if you're trying to become a cloud engineer in 2026 using a roadmap from even a year ago, you are already behind. AI has completely changed what companies are hiring for. The skills that got people jobs in 2023 and 2024 just aren't enough anymore. And the salary landscape has shifted too. Some roles are paying more than ever. Others are getting squeezed out entirely. In this video, I'm going to show you the complete cloud engineer roadmap for 2026. And this roadmap will be presented in levels going from one to five. Each level has a set of skills and each set of skills unlocks new job titles and higher salaries. The problem is most people just dump all the information onto you at once. Learn this, learn that, get certified, build projects with no sense of what order actually matters and what each skill is actually worth. I am going to fix that. At each level, I'll tell you exactly what you need to learn, what roles open up, what salary you're looking at, and how to know when you're ready to graduate to the next level. And by the end, you'll know exactly where you are right now and what's standing between you and the dream cloud engineering role that you want. Hi, I'm Suleiman. Five years ago, I went from zero to hired as a cloud engineer in just 90 days. Today, I run my own consultancy, working with Fortune 500 companies, and through my Cloud Engineer Academy, I've helped over 700 IT professionals and career switchers learn cloud engineering with my first principles blueprint. Let's start with level one, the foundation. At this level, you are either brand new to tech and you're working in a completely different industry right now, or you've just been curious about cloud but haven't actually started learning yet. This is like your bread and butter starting point. And I'll be honest, just having level one skills isn't going to land you a high paying cloud engineering job. Of course it won't. But that doesn't mean that it's not important because without having this foundation, everything else that we get into in level three and level four will fall apart. So do not skip this level. The skills that you need to unlock level one, Linux and operating systems. Most cloud servers run on Linux machines. So you need to get comfortable with using the command line, navigating directories, managing files, understanding how processes work. But don't just memorize commands. Understand what's actually happening when you run them. Then we have networking. This is how computers talk to each other. IP addresses, subnets, DNS, ports, protocols. Networking is the cornerstone of what we do as cloud engineers. Databases. SQL databases that store data in tables, no SQL databases, they are a little bit more flexible. You don't need to be an expert, but you do need to understand when you'd use each type of database and how data flows through applications. Virtualization is what makes cloud computing actually possible. Splitting one physical machine into many virtual ones. Security. Firewalls, encryption, authentication. Now security isn't something that you add later. It's built into everything from day one. And at this point, you're also going to be getting the CompTIA Security Plus certification and a networking certification as well. At level one, you can start applying for these jobs. IT support and help desk, technical support engineer, cloud support associate, junior system administrator. Here, you're looking around 50 to 70K in terms of salary. And for most of you, that's not going to be enough, but it also just depends on your personal circumstances. Help desk roles, for example, can be really tough it's high pressure and it's repetitive, but the skills that you get and the work experience that you gain, so like, such as debugging, troubleshooting, all of these skills it will give you such good experience because these skills you will continue to use in your career, especially when you are a cloud engineer. So if you've got zero experience, then these roles are a great stepping stone for you to then move into high paying roles in the future. And by the way, even I started as an apprentice at the very bottom of the tech hierarchy when I was just 18 years old. And looking back, I wouldn't change that because it taught me way more than any sort of book or cloud certification could do. Now let's move on to level two, the operator. At level two, you understand the fundamentals and you've started learning a cloud platform. You can explain what EC2 and S3 are. Maybe you've even passed your cloud practitioner certification. You can navigate the AWS console and you follow some tutorials. But here is the real test. If someone asks you to build something from scratch without a tutorial holding your hand, would you know where to start? And if the answer is no, then you are at level two. And that's completely fine because I will tell you how you can graduate from this level in just a moment. Now, to get the skills at level two, you first have to choose a cloud platform, AWS, Azure, or GCP. Now, in 2026, I still recommend AWS because it has the largest market share, which means more job opportunities for you. And it also has the most extensive free tier so you can actually build things without spending an absolute dime. And here is the good news. Everything that you learn on AWS transfers onto other platforms. The services have different names, but the concepts are exactly the same. Next, you need to learn the core AWS services and AWS has over 200 services. If you try to learn all of them, you're going to be overwhelmed and you won't actually know which ones are important. Instead, learn the core four. East two virtual service in the cloud, understand instance types, security groups, and how to connect via SSH. S3, object storage. This is where you can store files, images, backups, static websites. IAM, identity and access management. Who can do what in your AWS account? Then we have VPC, 
your private network in the cloud. Subnets, root tables, internet gateways, how traffic actually flows. And because we're going into 2026, and Mark Zuckerberg has come out and said that each employee at Meta will be given an AI score, which reflects how they're using AI in their role to improve their productivity and solve problems. So that's really why I'm kind of drumming about learning AI on AWS. And to me as a cloud engineer at this level, learning how to use and leverage AWS Bedrock or just integrate into AWS AI services will go a long way to help you stand out in today's job market. Now, in terms of certifications, you're looking at the cloud practitioner and the solutions architect associate, and they will give you a structured learning path. But obviously, you're not going to get hired based on your certifications alone, not in this job market, you will actually need to be at least at level three or even level four if you want to get hired in today's job market, which I'll break down for you. So with level two skills, you can start applying for these roles, cloud support engineer, junior cloud engineer, cloud operations associate, technical support engineer with a cloud focus. So now what you're doing is you're focused more on cloud specific roles, which which is great, but the salaries are still under $100,000, closer between 60 to 80K for the most part. And again, that's because of your skill set. At level two, you're not building complex systems yet, but you are working with cloud infrastructure daily and you're learning how it operates in production, which is an invaluable experience. Now, for those of you that are level one and you want to reach level two, here is what you need to do. Learn IT fundamentals through the cloud. So when you set up a VPC, you're learning networking. When you SSH into an EC2 instance, you're learning Linux. The context makes everything stick so much faster. And the moment that you can explain what East 2 S3, IM, and VPC do, why you'd actually use each one, and you've launched these services on AWS and build projects in the AWS console, then you've made it to level two. So now we get to level three, the builder. And this is where things get really good. And with these skills, you can actually work as a cloud engineer for a company in 2026. And stick with me here, because this will be quite a big jump from level two. Now, unfortunately, most people are stuck at level two applying for jobs that actually require at least level three competence. So here is the skills that you need to unlock level three. Infrastructures code with Terraform or CloudFormation. This is a non-negotiable. In the real world, absolutely nobody clicks through the AWS console to build real production system. And so far, you've probably clicked around the AWS console, but as a cloud engineer, we define everything in code. If someone online is teaching you to build projects by clicking around the console and telling you that you can do that to get hired, then I'm sorry to break it to you, but you need to listen and watch and learn from someone completely different. Because the chances are that person that you're learning from that's telling you to build projects on the console doesn't actually have any real engineering experience. They've never really built a real production system. They've never actually worked in an engineering team. So they can't teach you how to write code. But they can teach you how to click around a console for a step-by-step -step guide because that's all they can do. Do you see my point? Then we have Git and version control. Now, every piece of code and configuration that you write gets tracked in Git. Commits, branches, pull requests. This is standard practice everywhere. CI/CD pipelines. This is how code gets from a developer's laptop to production safely and automatically. So you need to learn GitHub Actions, set up a pipeline that runs tests, check for security issues, and deploy to AWS. Then we have security in depth, CloudWatch and CloudTrail, secrets management, network security with security groups and knuckles, advanced AWS services, for example, with Compute. You've got Lambda, ECS, or Fargate. Each one has different pros and cons. API gateways for managed APIs, Route 53, CloudFront, Direct Connect, right? You're just developing that depth of across the board because you're getting hands-on and solving real business problems here. And of course, it means documenting everything. Architecture diagrams, explaining your decisions, the problems that you've hit and how you solve them. At level three, you can actually start applying for cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, platform engineer, site reliability engineer, infrastructure engineer. Now it's not going to be easy and it's going to take time, but these roles are paying well in six figures. So it's quite a big jump. And again, that's because you've acquired a new skill set that the market will pay you well for. And what's even more powerful, and I'm sure you've noticed, is that having these cloud engineers engineering skills actually opens up way more doors in tech for you. And that's the beauty of having this skill set and the flexibility that it provides you. Now, if you are at level two and you want to reach level three, here is the shift. The trap at level two is what I call console clicking. You can spin up an EC2 instance through the console, you can follow tutorials and build projects, but you're not actually building anything for yourself. So to reach level three, everything that you build has to be defined in code. No more clicking consoles for projects. When you have two to three documented projects built entirely with infrastructure's code, and you can explain the trade-offs that you've made and every decision that you've made and every decision that you thought about, you're approaching level three. Obviously, there's different tiers with this level, but that's the big differentiator between level two and level three. Now onto level four. And 
this is where you unlock the skills that allow you to earn over $200,000 comfortably. At this level, you don't just build what you're told to build. You know what should be built. When someone describes a business problem, you can design an architecture. But also, you now have this newly found AI engineering skills, being able to orchestrate agents that work autonomously in cloud environments. Because AWS recently launched their own frontier agents, security agents, DevOps agents, and they help companies manage their cloud environments 24 seven without having engineers that work on call overnight. At this level in 2026, being familiar with AI infrastructure and AI workloads is a must. And at level four, you think in trade-offs. You consider what happens when things fail, when traffic spikes, when costs need to come down. You are the person that teams rely on for technical leadership. So the skills that you need, system design. This is the core of level four, and it's an incredibly valuable skill that only a small percentage of engineers truly possess. You need to understand how to design systems that are scalable, i.e. handle 10 times the traffic without breaking, reliable, keep working when components fail, secure, protected at every single layer, cost effective, fits within the budget, trade-off analysis, every architecture decision has trade-offs. Level four engineers understand them deeply. So Lambda versus E2 versus ECS. When does each one make sense? SQL versus no SQL, what are you optimizing for? Multi-region versus single region, cost versus reliability, build versus buy. When do you use managed services versus your own? The right answer is always, it depends. Level four engineers can actually explain exactly what it depends on. You need failure mode thinking because everything eventually fails. So you always have to design for failure. So level four engineers design for failure. What happens when this database goes down? How do we handle five extra traffic spike? What's our disaster recovery plan? And then of course, technical communication. So writing design documents, creating architecture diagrams that non-technical people can actually learn from and understand, leading technical discussions, mentoring junior engineers. Level four opens up senior roles, senior cloud engineer, senior platform engineer, senior site reliability engineer, cloud security engineer, ML ops engineer. Salary ranges here are at least over 250K because you're no longer just implementing, you're actually designing and leading initiatives. Companies pay significantly more for engineers who can make architectural decisions, not just execute on someone else's design. And if you're at level three and you want to shift to level four, the key here is from building to designing. At level three, you just implement a solution that someone else designed. At level four, you can create the solution yourself. And here is how to make the jump. Stop following patterns blindly. When you build something, ask yourself, why this approach? What are the alternatives? What are the trade-offs? What would break this? What would I do differently at 10 times the scale? That's how you reach level four. And finally, level five, the architect. And I'm going to be real with you. Most people won't even reach this level, and that's completely fine. Somewhere between level three and level four is comfortable six figures. That's the goal for most of you watching. But if you do want to push yourself further, at level five, you're not just designing systems, you are shaping technical strategy. You are in rooms with leadership. People come to you for judgment and not just technical answers. The skills here are less about technical knowledge and more about how you think. First principles thinking, questioning assumptions, stripping problems down to their core fundamental truths. AI native mindset, designing AI platforms at scale and not just demos and translating between technical decisions and business outcomes. At level five, you are looking at principal engineer, head of platforms, VP roles, making between 300K, 500K or even seven figures a year or maybe even building your own consultancy like I have. But again, for most of you, you want to aim for level three or level four. So here is your complete cloud engineer roadmap for 2026. And it works if you're someone who has no prior IT experience or you're already in tech and you've built some hands-on projects, got some decent level skills. Level one, the foundation, IT fundamentals, Linux, networking, databases, virtualization, security basics. Roles here is help desk, IT support, and salary is about 65K. Level two, the operator, cloud platform knowledge, core AWS services and AWS certifications, roles, junior cloud engineer, cloud support, engineer, salary, 85K. Level three, the builder, Terraform, CICD, security, advanced AWS services, documented portfolio, roles, cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, platform engineer, SRE, salary, 150K. Level four, the engineer, system design, technical leadership, and AI engineering. Trade-offs, failure modes, architecture decisions, roles, senior cloud DevOps platform engineer, cloud security, MLOps, salary, all the way to 200K and more. Level five, the architect, AI native, first principle thinking, business contacts, roles, solutions architect, principal engineer, head of platforms, consulting. This can be over 300K all the way to a million dollars. And here is what makes this stack really powerful. And for those of you that are still here, 
Listen up. If you're in level two or level three right now and you really want to make the jump into the next level or just get into a new role and just make some more money, then all you need to do is grab some of the skills from level four and level five and just sprinkle them into your day to day role. Adopt an AI native mindset. Learn what first principles thinking is. Understand the trade offs and business context that you have to make when you try and make decisions. These skills, especially in 2026, will help you stand out for when you're applying for cloud engineering roles and it's what helped my students land roles even in this drop market including some at AWS. So analyze what level you're at, what skills you need to graduate. And as always, I'm rooting for you. Good luck.